Uh, I know a lot of guys are asking how you go from a flat tappet to a roller cam on these 351s, 302s. This is basically any motor, it all applies the same. But I'm working on 351 Windsor. Uh, I got my, my cam installed. And if you just take note of this valley here, this is definitely a flat tappet block. There's nowhere for the for the spider to actually bolt in. And I have a roller block right here. And you can see the difference right there. Right there is where this guy bolts into. And what he does is he holds down. There we go. And then each of those little spider legs holds down one of these which goes around these rollers. You might ask, why can I not just slap these stock rollers in place of these flat tappets? Well, if you look, the size, the length difference is just gonna cause you a bunch of troubles. And if one of the, I have heard of people using these, but it's not worth the damage that you're probably going to do in the end because when it comes up out of the lifter hole it might stick on this edge right here and then you just start breaking things so it's just better to do it the way i'm about to do it so i ordered these they're through trick flow surprise surprise they're actually howard cams uh conversion lifters all right, so with these particular lifters here, you don't have to, it specifically says don't pump them up. So what I'm gonna do is just oil bath them, at least give them a chance to, to get some air out. But these, they even have a nice recess to hold the oil in there. And then you just try to, it's gonna be messy. We only work in the most pristine conditions, we know that. And then it should fall right down there. So far so good. Alright, I'm going to install the rest of these. Alright, so I got all the lifters installed. They've all been oil bathed, got all the air bubbles out of them. Some guys like to let them sit for like 24 hours. I think it's kind of unnecessary. I've, I've never had a lifter failure doing it this way. But next we're going to be looking at the push rods. So when you do your retrofit, it just goes by, by engine and maybe you have the right push rod, maybe you don't. But what you want to do is, is check to make sure that you have the right length push rod. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But you can see these are two drastically different, both out of 302 but one is off a hydraulic motor and one's off a flat tappet. All right, so I threw both push rods in there and you can see this one came off a hydraulic roller, but in a hydraulic roller motor, the rollers sit up higher and these are recessed for flat tappet motors because these are retrofit lifters. You can see this one came off the flat tappet so I'm going to check and see, I'm just going to use it to check the length. I'm not going to use it to run the motor because uh, I don't know about the integrity. I don't know anything about this push rod. So I'm going to end up replacing a whole set, but that's just some insurance for me. All right. So next we're going to make sure we got the right length push rod here. So how you do that, I just use a Sharpie. You want to be sure to I do it one by one so that the Sharpie doesn't dry on you. And Sharpie is easily removable with any cleaner or solvent, whatever you plan to use. So I got my push rod in there. Lifters are in there. I got my time and chain. And then all you're going to do, it's a lot easier with two hands, but running the camera. So go ahead and mount up your rocker. You got to do this for every, I do it for every cylinder. You come right here and turn it over. I turn it over about three times. 
three times for the cam. That way we can see where, where she's riding at. That one, and now we should be on compression. And you just loosen up your rocker. And this will give you a pretty good idea where it's riding. So I can see it's not dead center. It's a little far, it's a little bit forward. So in order to get this, you gotta get the right, but this will get us in the ballpark. So as long as we're in the ballpark, we know which uh, push rod length checker to order. Pretty long push rod, so it might even exceed my tool here, which it will. Let's see, yeah. If that's the case, now we gotta go old school. All right, so this is unconventional, but it'll get me in the ballpark of where I know I want to be as far as push rod lengths. So it's right there, a little bit over eight, eight and a sixteenth. Maybe eight and an eighth. So now I know which length I, I kind of need, or at least I can get a push rod length checker and order the right, right one. So you might ask why I go from a flat tappet to a roller. And I got the two different cams here. This was the one that came out of the 351. He just went back to a flat tappet for his build. And then this is the one out of my 302. It's a Trick Flow Stage 1 and it's a roller, hydraulic roller cam. And the major issue I was having, and I, was, I just didn't want to deal with the uh, problems down the, down the road, is I'm running a heavier spring, and I didn't want to end up grinding down these lobes, which a flat tappet is known to do, especially if you're running too much spring pressure. You'll grind down these lobes, and what will start out as a pretty decent cam will be a piece of paperweight. With the hydraulic though, you don't have to worry about grinding cam loads down. Uh, you can also interchange the cams. So like on a flat tap it, each lifter is matched to each of these lobes and they have to stay with those lobes for the, the life of the lifter and the cam because they're worn together, so they're paired. On the roller, you can swap out the cam and just you can swap around the lifters. You can you can swap all sorts of stuff around without having to worry about you know wear marks or improper wear like you do with the flat tappet. And then the only other concern that I didn't cover yet was the uh, the gear. So you got to know what your cam's made out of. If it's cast, like this is a cast. You can see it's got the little sand casting marks and this is trick flows this is made out of a completely different material well you have to actually get a distributor gear change out your distributor gear for which cam you have i can't tell you what you need because i don't know what you have but there's plenty of write-up on it on the internet this is the gear for the 302 and this is the 351 i don't know what he has on there so i'm just going to go ahead and change it out it's 30 dollars, and it's really less of a headache if i do it now than if i chance it put it in grind down a distributor gear and then have to cut break down the motor and replace the distributor gear